On today's show, Minnesotans take a fishing adventure to Alaska. We'll float the famous Kenai River for salmon. It's rich with salmon. And later, we head to the Gulf of Alaska for rockfish and whatchamacallits. Yeah. You got Jake. And later, Grandpa, that's me, gets to see Alaska through grandson Jake's eyes. Now that's how you catch a salmon. Does it get any better? Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. Yes, I'm back. Remember, when I turned the show over to Bill Shirk and Laura Shera, I said, I'll be back doing some specials. Well, this is one of them. A very special adventure to Alaska to meet some Minnesotans up there and also tag along with my daughter Simone and grandson Jake. And what an adventure it was. Dreams seldom come true, but they do here, Alaska. Wild, breathtaking, fish rich. It's everything the top of a bucket list ought to be, and more. The scenery is breathtaking. I mean, you can't beat it anywhere. Beauty, mountains, fishing, wildlife, and fresh air. It's a, honestly a humbling experience to be in an environment like this. Alaska is, I cannot describe it in words, but it's a feeling that, it's just phenomenal. Oh, what a feeling. All kinds of feelings, especially feeling lucky. First salmon of the day. Yes, Alaska is all about fishing, rivers and salmon, ocean and rockfish, and more. Naturalist John Muir once advised, don't go to Alaska as a young person because you'll never be satisfied anywhere else. Aaron Larson knows that well. All my family lives in Minnesota, and, and I knew that I wanted to stay here. Amazing, the minute I got here, it was just, it, it grabbed me. Yeah, I consider Alaska home. Neil Marlowe grew up in Deer River, Minnesota. Just fell in love with the Kenai Peninsula. I had the wilderness right out my front door. It's a great variety of things you can do here. It's been said even the most powerful binoculars really can't see Alaska. It's too large. Larger than Texas, California, and Montana combined. Of the 20 highest mountain peaks in North America, 17 of them are in Alaska. Purple Mountain Majesty describes Alaska. Alaska calls itself the last frontier, and it is. Back in 1867, Alaska also was called a joke when Secretary of State William Seward agreed to buy Alaska from Russia for 7.2 million, or roughly two cents an acre. It was Russia's idea to sell Alaska, but the purchase was ridiculed by critics back in Washington who called it Seward's folly. A few years later, somebody discovered gold and the critics went silent forevermore. Today, Alaska is still the last frontier, although a changed one. And the historic rush for gold is long over. However, money still grows on the walls in Homer, Alaska, in the Salty Dog Saloon. And folks still come for another rush, the rush of salmon in a river. Oh! <laughs> Good one, Jake. Good one. Baby, come back. 
Moments like this explain in part why one comes to the last frontier to experience the fishing rush yeah. that keeps on a rush. Good job, Jake, good job. Sometimes your heart can skip a beat. Yep. Yeah. You always feel lucky when you get one in. Oh, oh yeah, beautiful. For daughter Simone. That's my fish. To fight him an Alaskan pink salmon was enough excitement. Good job, Simone. Gosh, you guys, I'm exhausted. Exhausted in the last frontier? <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes, sir. 15 minutes of boredom followed by 45 seconds of complete chaos. Up next, fishing on the Kenai, Alaska's most famous river, home to historic salmon invasions against a swift current rushing endlessly to the sea. That's next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers, Star Bank, Rapala Ice Force, and by Factory Motor Parts. the start of a day on Alaska's Kenai River. It's mid-August, a moment in time when the Kenai is alive with migrating salmon. I like him. Two longtime friends, Fun. the Eppings, Norb and his son Jay, Cramping. <laughs> are in one boat guided by Aaron Larson, Look at this size of that. fishing guide at Marlowe's on the Kenai. That's grandson Jake fishing with his mother Simone and me. The salmon. Guided by Neil Marlowe. Fair amount of practice. Yeah. What do you got, Jake? This is Jake's first Alaskan experience. I'll pull him up. <laughs> but a special moment for his grandpa. Now that's how you catch a salmon. <laughs> Kena has five species of salmon. We have king, uh, sockeye, silver, pink, and the occasional dog salmon. On the Kenai, the pink and silver salmon appear in late summer, a timetable as old as time itself. It's just the immensity of it all is staggering. Just dozens, hundreds, thousands of salmon swimming up to where they were hatched to go up there to spawn and die. And we're intercepting some to catch for sport, but also catch for food. As you might expect in the last frontier, we weren't the only ones fishing for salmon. Look at the hump on him, my gosh. They get that hump because they're coming up to spawn. That's a breeding thing, like, that's their sex appeal. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Simply being on the Kenai River is an experience of its own. It is Alaska's most famous and most popular river, swiftly flowing 82 miles and falling 430 feet in elevation as it winds to the sea from its headwaters at Kenai Lake. It's a restless river, the Kenai. Its current of blue-gray water churning at eight to 10 miles per hour, day and night. While we explored the Kenai, we also were casting a Minnesota connection to catch salmon. These are Minnesota made. Vibrex spinners, size four. Tried and true for the Kenai River. Made by Blue Fox, a Minnesota company. It's one of the few that gets a good response out of the salmon. No other lure needed. And the strikes go on. These salmon are doing a job on you, bud. Meanwhile, the Eppings were also casting and catching. While pink salmon were a hoot to catch, the prize fish was a silver, maybe a silver, huh? Or otherwise known as a coho salmon. There we go. A lot of people say, what's your favorite fish? I go, the one that's on the end of my line. That's a good joke. Hey, Grandpa, why do ducks have feathers? Don't know. Uh, so it can cover their butt quacks. <laughs> 
Uh, Methinks it's time to head back to Marlowe's. I think we make a great base camp, uh, kind of set up here to explore most of what Alaska has to offer. We enjoy what we're doing. We get a lot of customers that return year after year. We've had some that have been coming back for well over 20 years. When we return, we'll spend another day on the Salmon Ridge Kenai River. That's the good news. The bad news is that's the last day on the Kenai. Closed captioning is brought to you by Maple Grove Lock and Safe, your premier Liberty safe dealer. The start of day two on the Kenai. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Shoot! That was the fish's fault. I'll get him in the boat yet. <laughs> Must run in the family, losing fish. No! We're gonna run back to the lodge. I'm gonna get a net with a 30-foot handle on it. Fishing the Kenai was humbling. They're there, you know they're there. Because when you're casting, you have fish that are surfacing and flopping in the water all around you. There's fish there, but there's only a couple that want to play the game with you. Oh, gosh. Whoa. There. Woo. <laughs> With my daughter and grandson, I should have the hot hand. Who outfishes you every time? Me. Like that. <laughs> Take that one home, Jake. Wow. Grandpa and I and our little bickers, who can get the biggest fish? And if you get a small fish, you make fun of each other. Woohoo! Fish on, boys! Jake's mom is up to bat. What do you got there, Sloan? I got a big old salmon, Dad. <laughs> there you go, Jake. Your mom shows you how. We'll share the shot. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice one. It's a dandy, Jakey boy. It's a dandy. Isn't he pretty? Yeah, he's beautiful. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doc and Jay Epping had their own fishing show. Yeah. It's just phenomenal. Hey, the number and the size of the salmon that I've caught the last two days, and to do it with my son, is one of the greatest things wow. that uh, I'm excited about. I mean, it makes you feel so minuscule in this world to see the vastness of, of one, the country, but then the abundance of fish and wildlife that are here. It's absolutely mind boggling. It's trite to say, but really, really, it doesn't get any better. So it goes on the Kenai, and so it ends. Well, not really. On the dock at Marlowe's, you can, well, catch salmon with a bear hook. Yeah, bear hook, hard to believe. When we return, it's on to the tip of the Kenai Peninsula and into the Gulf of Alaska in search of lingcod and rockfish. Stay with us. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut, Mountain Dew, Minnesota Rebat, and by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Now you can't go to Alaska without experiencing the ocean, you know, the Pacific. So one day we went out there and it was a little rough, you can ask my daughter, but when we got to the fishing spot uh, to catch rockfish, the rockfish were there in numbers, uh, unbelievable. All right, we're off on a new adventure. This is Seward, Alaska. We're on the El Patron fishing boat. It's a long boat ride. We'll see what happens. 
All right, boys, Captain, ready to go. As we left the port of Seward, we didn't know if the fish would bite. But we couldn't complain about the scenery. However, the ride out to sea wasn't, shall we say, smooth sailing. I don't know, I'm got to figuring this out. This is a little bigger bait than we used back in Minnesota. Basically, heavy jigging. Drop it down, and you go like that. Up and down. This is supposed to be sport, but it's actually work. <laughs> Catch number one didn't take long. Hey, for scrapers, look at the mouth on them. Fish on. Ditto for number two. It's a lot of tiredness because you have to practically set the hook every time. And this fish is 40 pounds. I'm dying. And finally, I got it in. It's a keeper link cut, not a keeper. Yeah. And whew, that was really tiring. Yeah. Look at that bend that rod. I don't know who's more tired, the fish or me. At least I'm not laying down. They're ugly but beautiful. Like a pro angler, Captain Matt Bowie kept the El Patron boat right on a fish-rich reef, thanks to experience. How deep is it here, Captain? Yeah, 105, 110, average. Then a surprise. Gold strike. Beauty. Is that an average size or is that a big one or what is that? This is a nice size. Oh, yeah. oh, it's got some heft to them. And this is the yellow eye rockfish. You see the yellow eye there? Turns out the fishing was fast, almost too fast. We maxed out with one lingcod and I'm looking forward to getting home and figuring out some culinary treat to make myself. Hey, hey, come on, Mom. Limits caught, Woo! it was time to return to port. Fishing was good. We all got what we came for, and we headed back after I lost my lunch. <laughs> it was pretty cool seeing Alaska with my mom and catching doubles with mom and grandpa and reeling them in and giving them the crap on who can catch the biggest fish. Experience in Alaska through your child's eyes, it just warms your heart. It's a memory that I'll always keep in there and always remember. Alaskans and the Salmon Rich Pacific have long been connected at the hip. Inspiring stories of fishing fortune or fatal attraction. Here in the small coastal port of Homer, the locals carry memories of both. Now this memorial is a tribute to folks lost at sea. This guy died in the fishing boat, fishing vessel here. Commercial fishermen, sport fishermen. There's a story behind every one of them. Sad story. Well, we've come to the end of my Alaska adventure. This is Homer, located at the very tip of the Kenai Peninsula. Been a great trip. I do have to confess, however, that, you know, I wanted to look like a normal Alaskan man, so I decided to let my beard grow. It's the uh, longest and oldest it's been for years. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to go back home now to good old Minnesota, and the beard's gonna come off. I have to admit, it's Pretty scratchy, pretty scratchy, yep. Well, the whiskers are all gone. <laughs> you know, well, I've been to Alaska many times, but it's always uh, special to go there with your children or grandchildren. As a grandparent, you also know that uh, time is on their side, but it's not on mine. So now, Simone and Jake have a very special memory to cherish, and the best part is, I'm in it. That about does it for us. Remember, introduce the kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Shera, and of course, my sidekick and star, and still star of the show, yes, Raven. <laughs> Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook 